With the end of the year at hand and with many videos done, as well as many projects I'm still working on, yes, I'm still working on North America, I promise, I thought I'd use a video to talk about the history of something I enjoy a lot, newspaper comic strips. As a kid, I really enjoyed reading the comic pages and collected many of the books for them. I even watched the TV specials, and at one point when I was a kid, I even tried to draw my own and sell them at school. For those who are perhaps too young or those who never read the newspaper, basically comic strips are any serialized comic that is told by a bit at a time. So rather than a comic book that tells an entire story within 20 to 40 pages, or a manga volume which has even more, a comic strip would have as few as a single panel or maybe as much as one page, but the most common would be three to four panels a day. Now, for many of you, you're probably thinking of webcomics. Webcomics are basically comic strips, but ones that are on the internet rather than printed in a newspaper. And most webcomics are directly or indirectly inspired by the newspaper comic strip format. As people read fewer newspapers and are more constantly online, webcomics are a more cost-effective way to publish a comic strip, and it could even potentially be read by more people and bypass the need for a publisher or a syndicate. Even now, many newspaper comic strips are still being printed, also post their comics online now. So while newspapers are a dying medium, comic strips are not a dying art. Many comic strips had millions of readers and were popular enough to have TV specials, movies, and merchandise to where there are many franchises you're already aware of but might not realize that they started as newspaper comic strips. Garfield, Charlie Brown, although the comic was known as Peanuts, Dennis the Menace, Flash Gordon, and Boondocks are just a small sample of comic strips that grew to have TV shows or even full-length movies. And even past that, there are some that didn't have any other mediums but were still extremely popular anyway, such as Calvin and Hobbes. For this video, however, I want to talk about the history of one of my personal favorites. It wasn't as popular as Garfield or Charlie Brown, and it had more of a cult-following type of popularity. The comic strip Get Fuzzy by Darby Conley. Get Fuzzy began in September 6th of 1999 and started off in only 75 newspapers. The comic, in many ways, has a familiar dynamic. An owner of pets who don't quite get along with each other. There are dozens of comic strips in this format alone. We have Rob Wilco, the pet owner who works as an advertisement executive and is a vegetarian. Then for his pets, we have Satchel Pooch, who is a Sharpay and Yellow Lab mixed. And Bucky Cat, who is a Siamese cat. Now, you're already probably expecting a similar dynamic to Garfield, where the cat is smart but lazy, while the dog is lovable but dumb. However, I'd say that this comic took that cliché and completely took it to the next level. The best way to describe Bucky Cat is that he's an antisocial, semi-conspiratorial narcissist. Satchel Pooch, meanwhile, isn't the brightest, but he isn't completely dumb either. He's more innocent and naive, and he usually just wants to get along with everyone, even if Bucky Cat would never get along with him. The true entertainment of this comic comes from how they all interact with each other. Most comic strips have a setup and punchline format, and Get Fuzzy does that sometimes. But most of the comic involves many storylines consisting of absurd conversations that almost sound like an Onion article version of internet arguments conducted at 3 in the morning, with one person speaking with such a tone that you can't quite tell if they actually believe what they're saying or if they're slightly trolling. The dialogue has a brilliant way of being written to where they can even bring up talking points or arguments that you'd almost expect from more serious discussions like political or religious arguments without actually getting deep enough to make the reader uncomfortable or offended. Usually Bucky Cat being the more out there character is either just completely wrong or insane, sounding like someone who only gets their information from 4chan and weird subreddits. Rob is the conventional everyman college graduate who is usually right or at least not crazy and yet still gets dragged into these arguments anyway and can't help but continuing. Satchel, meanwhile, is the person who tries to avoid these arguments, but is also very impressionable. One example is a storyline that lasted about two weeks worth of comics about a conspiracy in which Bucky Cat thinks that TV puppet characters, such as Muppets, are actual real living creatures. To give you an idea on how the conversations progress, it starts with this comic. You're watching Barney? I'm studying Barney. Studying? Robert, I watch Barney the same way you watch your mixed martial arts reality show. It's all psychology. He's a children's character, Buck. Man, that's his act! He's a performer! I bet off said he drives around in a blinged out purple Hummer and wears sunglasses indoors. Haha, <laughs> blingy! Barney? Halfway through, the conversation is at this point. All these things you think are so tough, 
the Grinch, Oscar the Grouch, Barney, you do realize they're not real, right? They're like puppets and costumes and stuff. Rob, Rob, Rob. You'll believe anything the liberal media says, won't you? Okay, why don't you enlighten me as to what they are? Cold War genetic experiments. Fact. Oh, for the love of- they aren't genetic experiments! Oh, sorry, you're right. I forgot how the Snuffleupa guy were blocking my view of the migrating big birds the last time I went to the sanctuary of naturally occurring animals! And then finally, it ends like this. Let me get this straight. Any children's TV character that happens to be red was created as part of a Soviet mind control program. That's correct. Even Elmo, the cutest thing ever. No, 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 no. Real name, Ivan Elmanov. My best guess is that his accent is Uzbek. In fact, the Tickle Me Elmo doll is based on an old Soviet Garkalesis interrogation training mannequin. No! Okay, I'm out. Bye. Already the dialogue is different than traditional comic strips, and it helped its popularity grow. Its popularity grew quickly enough to where in 2002 it won a National Cartoonist Society Award. But over the years, it also got mired in some minor controversies. In 2003, the comic strip jokingly implied that the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania smelled badly, which actually somehow led to Darby Conley receiving hate mail and death threats. In response, Conley replied with a non-apology that hilariously clarified that it was nearby Suwaki Heights that actually smelled, and implied that New Jersey was even worse. Then the next day, he posted a fake reader's poll of Pittsburgh's choice for the smelliest city that also included the non-cities of New Jersey and Darby Conley's rear end. Then another strip saying it's at least not Cleveland, Ohio, but then finally ending it with the characters dressed up as Ohio sports players on trading cards, presumably so Cleveland wouldn't be too upset. Later in 2005, Darby Conley got sued by Boston sportscaster Bob Lobel for Get Fuzzy insinuating he was drunk on the job although that was settled out of court and didn't really go anywhere. And naturally, these things just made Get Fuzzy even more popular. While it's surprisingly difficult to find statistics on how many newspapers it was featured in over time, by looking at old articles with rough statistics, it started in 75 newspapers in 1999, was in over 400 by 2003, over 500 by 2008, and at around 700 newspapers by 2013. For comparison, Garfield was, and still is, the most widely distributed comic strip of all time, and in 2013 was in around 2,580 newspapers. So at least with newspapers, Get Fuzzy was at around a quarter of Garfield's popularity. Get Fuzzy's rapid growth at a time where newspaper readership began to decline also demonstrated its popularity. Truth is, newspaper ink and paper cost money, which is why you have to pay for them. So a newspaper is going to be more hesitant on adding a new comic, or a controversial comic, to its roster unless they know that people are willing to pay to read them. Get Fuzzy's popularity was also helped by the introduction of many minor and sometimes even one-off characters that were friends of either Satchel or Bucky. I'll rapid-fire some of them. First, some of Satchel's friends. Nostra Dalmatian, a dog who claims to see the future. Chaser, an FBI bomb-sniffing dog. Ira Chihuahua, a dog who, unlike Satchel, is willing to make fun of Bucky. Jürgen Durgen, a dog who tried to hunt down Bucky with a baseball bat after being pranked on. Fungo Squiggly, a weasel who is the official number one enemy of Bucky Cat. Chubby Hugs, a cat obsessed with hugging. And one of my favorites, Shakes Pug, a pug who wears a rubber glove that speaks in nothing but Shakespearean English. For some of Bucky's friends, we have Webster, a cat encyclopedia, Brother Fax, a missionary for the religion of felonism, Foodar, a cat who can locate the nearest food like a radar at any time, Stank Lloyd Ron, a badly tempered architect, and then my personal favorite character of the entire comic, Mac Mank McManx. Mac Mank McManx, sometimes known as m and and m is a cat from Manchester, England, who speaks in nothing but thick Manchester slang and for the most part is not really understood by anyone else. All of these additional characters have made for some really fun comics, such as this one. Robert, this is Brother Fax. He'd like a word with you. What religion are you, if you don't mind me asking, Robert? Actually, I kind of do mind, Brother Fax. Do you believe in a higher power, Robert? He's a Googleist, brother. I'm a... what? I've heard you say that Google is all-powerful. No, I said it's very powerful. Okay, reformed Googleist. Have you considered villainism, Robert? Never. 
Well, I'll just leave you some literature to look over. I'd be happy to talk about it sometime. Garfield gains salvation? However, despite Get Fuzzy reaching a height in popularity during the early 2010s, something mysterious happened to it. Due to the nature of how newspapers work, comic strips need to be completed and sent in ahead of time. Furthermore, since Sunday newspapers are traditionally bigger, for many newspapers, Sunday is the only day of the week where the physical print of comics includes color instead of just black and white, as well as having double the amount of panels. Therefore, Sunday comics are sent in even further ahead of time. With comics for every day of the year needing to be finished ahead of time, sometimes it's hard for a comic artist to get some time off. Whenever it does happen, they take what's called a sabbatical, and for their time off, the newspaper will print repeats of older comics. On the week of January 17th of 2011, a week's worth of reruns from 2009 were published before it went back to another couple of weeks of new material. But then starting from that point, there were more and more periods of reruns, either for the week, for the Sunday, or both. It kept going on and off where altogether nearly half the year was reruns. As the years continued, there were slowly more repeats and fewer new ones, and by 2013 at Get Fuzzy's height of newspaper distribution, it had gotten to a point where there would occasionally be new Sunday comics but almost no new daily comics. It isn't the most uncommon thing for some popular creators to retire and do entirely reruns, or even for some to semi-retire and only do new comics on Sunday like with the comic Foxtrot. And as the years went by, that seems to be what the creator did, but the inconsistent pattern makes this a more unusual situation. Furthermore, artists tend to announce in their comic their retirement or semi-retirement. But Darby Conley seems to be a very private individual and hasn't said anything. Now, I don't just mean like he has no social media, I mean like he's literally said nothing in anything. Book collections were still released of older comics, as they're typically a few years behind, although by 2017 they had caught up with the new comics, and none of them had any word from the creator if he was ever going to come back, or stay semi-retired, or fully retire, or anything. They still make calendars and other merchandise even for next year in 2022. So it's not like the entire franchise is dead, but having this many repeats has begun a slow decline of the comic. According to the Go Comics website, it says that Get Fuzzy is now in 650 newspapers, which means it's been removed from around 50 newspapers since 2013. Indeed, many newspapers, such as the Washington Post, had to drop the comics saying they weren't receiving new comics and that it wasn't fair for newer artists trying to get their own spots in newspapers. At the same time, some comic strips such as Peanuts are so popular that plenty of papers are fine with entirely printing reruns anyway. Regardless, while a decline of 50 papers is notable, it's a very slow decline across 8 years and the strip is still among the most popular today. Perhaps since now newspapers aren't as popular as they used to be, and that there are lots of people who sometimes buy a physical newspaper solely for the comics page or crossword puzzles, it's almost gotten to a point where for smaller papers, it might be more risky to remove a beloved comic even if it is mostly or all reruns. After all, it's not like a TV where reruns are played all the time. A rerun from three years ago for a newspaper comic for readers who don't collect the books is something that they wouldn't have seen in three years so it's less likely to disappoint them. As of this video, though, the last new comic was a Sunday comic published in February of 2019, although the online website Go Comics accidentally mislabeled a March 31st, 2019 comic as a new one when it was a rerun. Regardless, it's been nearly three years since any new material, and still not a word. Now, Darby Conley is absolutely entitled to a private life and retirement, and whether he comes back or not, he's made a comic that I enjoyed growing up and still enjoy rereading to this day. So I hope you're in good health and living well. But if you are watching this video, Darby, please say something. Say anything. Even if it's a simple, I'm retired now, goodbye, in a new comic or a Reddit AMA something. I'll take anything at this point. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this unusual kind of video. You can read every comic of Get Fuzzy online at Go Comics, or you could buy the book collections in most bookstores. I'm Emperor Tiger Star, and I'll see you guys next time.